in this demonstration, what we're going to do is we're going to use Quadio to automatically identify the presence of individual speakers based on their direction. And I stress that it's based on their direction, where they are in the room. It's nothing to do with what they're saying or what they sound like. Uh, this is based purely and simply on where they are. So already when we come to look at the multi-channel WAV file that comes out of this, Quadio will have identified my voice and this direction and have associated it with the first channel. I can now switch over to this uh, direction here and uh, Quadio will now have created a second channel uh, for this uh, new angle. So if you imagine I was a second person sitting in a room, for example, uh, sitting around a conference mic, for example. And here's a third person. Now, there's nothing special about these uh, angles. I'm just walking to completely arbitrary angles. Um, and also, there's nothing special about the orientation of the, of the board. Uh, Quadio's completely 360 degrees symmetric, so it wouldn't matter uh, where the people were around the room. Now, in order to qualify as a new angle, uh, I've programmed it so that no two channels can be any closer than 20 degrees uh, 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 together. But apart from that, you can have any number of channels. And this is me back in um, uh, the, uh, uh, the second position. And uh, so my, sh my voice should now be going into the, uh, into the second channel. Let's have a listen. Well, before we have a look at the multi-channel WAV file, let's uh, take a quick look at what uh, you would hear normally uh, were this to be recorded with a conventional uh, desktop microphone or conference mic system. Basically, what you have is just a single channel. Uh, all the voices that were in the room have been reduced down to this uh, down to this single channel. And as a result, it's virtually impossible, just looking at this, for example, it's impossible to work out um, when any individual uh, person was speaking and you know of course you can't even tell how many people were in the room let's so that's that's what it would look like normally um, and uh, let's have a look now at the audio version here's the output from that audio demo and the first thing you'll see is that there are three channels that's because I was standing in three separate positions. So Quadio automatically, without any training, without any information about where I was standing or the number of active speakers, Quadio automatically identified that there were th uh, three distinct sound sources, and it's created a separate WAV channel for each of them. And we can listen. So now we can now listen to each of these independently. So whereas if you compare it with what I showed you just a second ago with the omnidirectional version, now it's quite clear when each person is talking. So let's uh, take a listen. For example, here on the first channel. In this demonstration, what we're going to do is we're going to use Quadio to automatically identify. Now you might hear um, some frequency filtering going on there. That's because I was using incredibly narrow beams. I think I was using 20 degree beam widths there. Um, so you will start to lose some signal. Again, <coughs> uh, that is at the risk of repeating what I said elsewhere. That's because we're not calibrating the microphones at all. Um, so in this particular uh, uh, tool, in, a, in the Audacity tool, we can apply um, techniques like, for example, the sound finder technique. So let's say we wanted to listen to the person that was at this first angle, for instance. You can just analyze that sound finder. And there you go. So that's when the first voice was active. We heard this a second ago. In this demonstration, what we're going to do is we're going to use... And here's the second person. We can now switch over to this ch uh, direction here and uh, Quadio will now have created a second channel uh, for this uh, new angle. So if you and finally the third person, or third angle. And there, and there it is. So, uh, whereas with the uh, omnidirectional uh, version, you would have to have listened to the entire recording to have worked out when each individual person was speaking. Whereas with this version, we can now uh, listen to each person independently. So let's have a quick listen to the third person. And here's the third person. Now, there's nothing special about these uh, angles. I'm just walking to completely arbitrary angles. So there you have it with Quadio, we get an automatic separation of those three 
sources based on their angle. So what we're doing here is we're using Quadio to create, if you like, a software programmable cardioid microphone. By that I mean a, 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 a microphone whose polar pattern is going to track me as I walk around the room. Now, yeah, of course, you can buy cardioid microphones today. The point is uh, that they are harder to find. Um, whereas uh, with Quadio, what we're basically doing is we've programmed it so that it's going to create um, if, if, you, if you like, effectively a cardioid pattern that always points towards the active source. So even as I walk around the room, um, uh, it's now tracking me. So what we can do is we can uh, apply Quadio, we can apply increasingly uh, narrow beam widths to eliminate uh, the reverberation. Now I'm standing over a metre away from the, uh, uh, from the microphone array at the moment, and when we listen to the omnidirectional signal, you'll hear that strong reverb coming through. But when we switch over to the filtered version, that reverb uh, will eventually uh, disappear. Now, I'm also going to pause uh, for a second. The reason being I wanted to show one other feature of this, which is that not only does it de-reverberate, but it also, of course, eliminates or it certainly suppresses uh, the level of ambient or background noise. Here's the output from that uh, demonstration and uh, what I've got here in the top line is the result of a 20 degree full with half maximum pencil beam microphone that was tracking me, walking with me uh, uh, as I walked around the room. This is 40 degrees full with half maximum, 60 degrees full with half maximum, and this is 360 degrees. In other words, this is the omnidirectional response of the microphone array. So let's have a listen now and you should hear the room reverb. Now, yeah, of course, you can buy cardioid microphones today. The point is uh, that they are harder to find, um, whereas uh, with quad. So, as I said, I was actually standing about a me 1.2, 1.3 meters away from the microphone array, and as a result, uh, you can hear the the room reverb in that recording. Let's listen now to the 60 degree uh, full with half maximum response. Now, yeah, of course, you can buy cardioid microphones today. The point is uh, that they are harder to find, um, whereas uh, with Quadio, what we're basically doing is we've programmed it so that it... So, uh, I don't know about you, but I think there's uh, quite a good suppression there of the room reverb. There is still um, uh, some audible reverb in the signal, but it's a lot less than it was before. But also, uh, there's a lot less background noise in the signal as well. Let's listen now to the 40 degree version. Now, yeah, of course, you can buy cardioid microphones today. The point is uh, that they are harder to find. Um, whereas uh, with Quadio, what we're basically doing is we've programmed. So what's happening now is that, um, uh, yes, there is uh, suppression of the reverb element, but because these microphones weren't calibrated, remember, these are plus or minus 4 dB microphones, um, some of the frequencies are being lost. Uh, what's happening is they're being sent to the wrong angle. So the answer to that, in order to uh, better recover the original signal, uh, but exclude the reverb, is to uh, uh, buy slightly better microphones. Uh, I would recommend, if you can, buy two or preferably even 1 dB tolerance uh, microphones, and that will make sure that uh, you get fantastic localization and therefore um, uh, uh, beam width filtering. Let's have a final, let's listen now to the 20 degree version. Now yeah, of course you can buy cardioid microphones today. The point is uh, that they are harder to find. Um, whereas uh, with Quadio, what we're basically doing is we've programmed it. So okay, so just uh, to remind you, that's a 20 degree pencil beam microphone that was automatically tracking me as I walked around the table. Now the next thing I wanted to show you was the level of background noise, and this is perhaps best done if we flip over to a dB scale. Remember the point where I, I paused for a second. So that pause was over here. Uh, the, in case you're wondering, by the way, the blip in the middle is when I uh, took a breath of air in as I was about to speak there. So that's not background noise, that's me inhaling air. Uh, now, uh, let's take a listen now to the omnidirectional version. Uh, for a second. 
The reason being, I wanted to show one other feature. Quite a pronounced uh, background hiss, background uh, noise uh, in that recording. Let's listen now to the 60 degree beam width version. Uh, for a second. The reason being, I wanted to show one other feature of this. Uh, for a second. The reason being, I wanted to show one other feature. So I think you'd agree, uh, quite good suppression there of the background hiss. Uh, you can actually see it there on the graph as well. So uh, that's what Quadio is doing uh, in this particular demonstration. I simply programmed Quadio to create a, a, a pencil beam that tracked me as I walked around the room. Um, and uh, by virtue of its directionality, I was able to suppress reverberation and background hiss. And in this demo, we're going to use Quadio as a surround sound microphone. So uh, what we're basically doing is I'm capturing the sounds using the little um, acoustic array, the little microphone array, excuse me, that I have in here, and then sending the output from that to a binaural rendering engine. So, uh, presuming that you're listening to this with headphones, please, if you're uh, listening to this with your um, uh, laptop uh, uh, speakers, forget it, it's not going to work. Uh, you need to be wearing headphones. So, um, now as I move around the microphone, you should have the impression of me moving around inside your head. Now, this is not stereo, okay? Stereo allows a sound source to exist somewhere on a line, a straight line. Uh, from the left, uh, obviously through your head, through to the right, whereas binaural will allow sounds to exist anywhere around the head, including in front of and behind the head. So, depending on the head relation transfer function that we've used, you ought to be able to distinguish between whether I'm standing in front of you and behind you. Most people can get the left and right, sometimes it's hard to pick out the, uh, the front back. But certainly this um, uh, uh, would allow you to, to differentiate between speakers um, uh, where this to be put into a conference mic environment. Or even for that matter, embedded, for example, or used as a little uh, USB attachment on a, on a smartphone, for example. So there you have it. This is a binaural render uh, of Quadio.